Your Highness, very nice to meet you. Thank you very much indeed for seeing us. Welcome to Dubai. This is my grandfather's house where my father and mother and us lived here. No electricity at that time when I was born. Only these lights, you see. Oh, the lanterns. Hang, uh, yeah. Lamp uh, things. And no water. And this is uh, also my grandfather. And that's my, my grandfather. Zimbabwe. Yes. Lovely country. Did you have people just knocking on the door and saying, I've got a problem with my house. Yeah. You know, can you help me? Yes, but they don't uh, knock on the door. The ruler will be sitting here. So what, the ruler would just sit outside waiting? Yes, buy that one and, and his people will be here. So anybody coming to see the ruler will sit next to him and say... And say that I need to have this done or I need to have yeah, that done? Yeah, and John, you know, I remember as a child trying to climb this, I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and this is my playground. And so you're going to drive me out into the desert now? Yeah, and I am not a very good driver. No, <laughs> very good driver, don't worry. <laughs> So I just want to ask you, because we're, we're going past the fabulous skyline yeah. that it is Dubai. I just kind of, did you, was that a vision? Did you have a feeling that when you were a child growing up, that one day, you know, Dubai would look like this, it would be cosmopolitan, it would be all these things? I will tell you, John. You know, I was lucky enough, I traveled with my father to Europe, England, and always my dream saying, roads, they have roads and they have buildings and, you know, flags. And to me, that was my dream. Will we have that here, you know? When this is my childhood. Between the uh, Emirates, there was no road. And if the people are unhappy, how do you know? How do, you, how do they tell you that they're unhappy? They will tell me. They t tell me. You know, and... Uh, but is there a full... For, for example, yeah. this telephone, in the last, from 10 years ago to now, I haven't changed it. And everybody knows. You know, the whole country knows my number. Ordinary people, Emirati, can, knows your phone number and will ring you up. Yeah, I have two numbers. One is private and one for the public. And Reem knows this. Yeah. So do you like Twitter? Yeah. 2.4 million followers, I see. Ah, yes. Uh, because I like, you know, to tell them what's happening and not to listen, to wait for them to say, you know. Just tell them what's uh, what happening and they are good about it. They follow you and why I'm doing this and, you know, so people can understand. Your Highness, uh, you've just won Expo 2020. When we drove out here, we saw all the cranes busy building. Is Dubai back? Well, uh, we are very happy that we won the Expo 2020. <clears throat> and uh, 116 countries voted for us. And this is, to me, is a great, all these countries to believe in UAE and Dubai. That's the message I got. But now we have to do something to make it even better for these people who voted for us and to make Expo an excellent Expo. I mean, it was only five, six years ago that people were saying Dubai was finished. There was an economic crisis. And uh, yes, I mean, some people said that, but uh, it is our mistake we did not answer. We did not say anything. But uh, when the crisis, I was, you know, it's a challenge and I know we'll overcome it. So therefore, uh, I was happy with my life going on and the people say, why, how is he? Because I know Dubai is uh, not finished and Dubai is back because it is Dubai and but, UAE. But there must have been a moment where you thought this is really scary. No, I think this is a challenge, uh, and I don't uh, get scared from challenges, you know. We, we face challenges and try to sort them out. So is the problem over? Are all the debts paid off? Is 
Yeah, the other uh, day in the news, uh, uh, the palm company is going to pay a year ahead. So everything is, you know, settled. Why do you think you made the? Wh why did you get into this mess? Why did? Why did the crisis come about? There must have been. There must be things you've learnt about it. Of course, we learnt. We, we learn every day, you know, from this. Uh, but it is not us. We are a part of this world, and this crisis, or I call it, challenge, is uh, hit the world. But we. Do you not? Do you not like the word crisis? No, it's challenge, and we are. In the Arabian Peninsula, every day is a challenge for us. Every day we have to face, you know, challenge for the water, challenge for something to eat, and every day a challenge. So we take it as a challenge. When is there is no challenge, everybody is a leader. Where is the difficulty or challenge, some will come through. And that's just a test for us to know. I mean, the latest indications are saying, some people are saying that property prices are rising very sharply again, rental prices are going up very, very fast. Are you not worried that another bubble is being inflated over Dubai that could burst again? A, bu a bubble will fly and not burst because we put a law now, you cannot raise the rent more than percentage. So that will help to stop everybody. I know Expo is coming and People will try to, but we put a law and committee that they don't raise the uh, renting high. Just as a matter of interest, the Arab Spring, did that turn out to be economic good news for Dubai? Because, you know, investors who may have been putting their money into Syria or Egypt or Bahrain or Libya were thinking, I know, I'll put my money into Dubai instead. I was asked this question when we had uh, the government meeting, 30 country government meeting, and uh, one lady asked me, did you benefit from the Arab Spring? And I was honest with her. At that time, the number was with me, yes, there is $30 billion came. But I, to I told her, but remember, if, that, if the Arab Spring didn't happen, there will be $60 billion. Did you see the Arab Spring coming? Yes, and uh, I said this when I visited, I, I spoke in the Gulf University in Bahrain in 2004. And I said to the leaders of the Arab, change or you will be changed. I said that your people will look away from you or try to do that. And I, because you don't, I don't know the future, but there is indication, so you can, you know, feel that uh, that is coming. You cannot lie for your nation uh, 40 years and you think they'll still believe you with this quick communi communication now. Well, let me ask you about some of the specifics about some of the uh, countries. We've got Geneva 2 taking place later on this month, and I think you, that Dubai will be represented and uh, you will be there. Can President Assad stay in power? Well, uh, somebody asked me about uh, Syria and this, and I said, Assad will take a long time. But, you know, if you kill your people, you cannot stay. You know, I hope there will be a solution peacefully that uh, a new elected government will come. So, because he has killed his people, he will go eventually? Eventually he will go, yes. And do you believe that you ought to be offering any support whether financial or military, or are you, to the Free Syrian Army? We are supporting uh, the people of uh, Syria who was, are in um, Jordan or Turkey or other, that we are helping those. But the Free Army, you don't know because there is some extremist and you don't know how many group of people now in Syria. And as you hear that, some groups are fighting each other. So you don't want to do what Qatar has done or Saudi Arabia has done? And no, our foreign policy is uh, different than, uh, you know. We try to help and not to interfere. It seems to me that the UAE, for all its wealth and its power, it, it takes very light steps on foreign policy. It doesn't want to show its muscle and its weight in the way that, you know, we've discussed that 
Qatar does? No, I mean, maybe Qatar have a reason or a vision, but here UAE, we don't, you know, we, we like, you know, the Emiratis and the Emirates is kind. We don't want to interfere with the other people. Their nation should say what they want and we should always help and not interfere with other countries. Here in the UAE, you have cracked down quite hard on political Islam, um, a number of people... Brotherhood. ...on the Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah. Is Egypt now better off with General al-Sisi in charge than it was with Mohamed Morsi? Much better, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I was asked by the CNN that uh, won't you worried about the Islamic Brotherhood getting uh, in Egypt and holding the, the government and, and everything? I said, no, I am not worried about that. They will last only one year, and then, you know, the people and the army will sort that out. So therefore, it's better for Egypt this. What did they do when they came with uh, Dr. Mercy? I mean, see what happened and see what happened now. I mean... Uh, but isn't that democracy? The people spoke, the people elected Mohamed Morsi. Why the people then uh, got rid of him? They went to the streets and uh, squares and said, come on, the army sort it out. A lot of people went there and, and so. And we will see in the next election. Do you think, do you think General al-Sisi will stand? He'll be the next president? I hope he stay in the army and leave somebody elected from, uh, for presidency because I think he's important for him to be the head of the army. He's a strong man and a very good man for okay. Egypt. So better as head of army than, than head of state? That's what I, I think. Very interesting. Can I just ask you about, I mean, we heard about the death this weekend of Ariel Sharon, the former Israeli Prime Minister. John Kerry is making very strenuous efforts to bring peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Well, how do you see the prospects? Well, uh, between Israel and the Palestinians, one day they came very close to sign, but they didn't sign the peace process. If they had that and they signed the peace process, of course, there will be a bomb here and a rocket there, but everybody, the whole world will be against who doing this. And I promise you, Israel will benefit more than us because we want to deal with Israel and this after the peace process. What we are asking is a country for the Palestinian. And we are, you know, accepting Israel. But for the Palestinian, we cannot just say nothing, nothing, no country, no no place to stay. So therefore, if we have f signed the peace process, there will be some problem, difficulties, but on time, Israel will benefit more. Uh, you, you said you'd like to be trading with Israel. After the peace process, we'll do everything with Israel, you know. They will trade with them and uh, we welcome them and everything. But sign the peace process. How, cl how close do you think they are? Every time I think they are close, they go away. I think, uh, you see, what happens is, if the peace process is coming, and there is a, a rocket go to Israel, which is not accurate, Israel go back and hit back. So, action and reaction, you know, always happen that way. But if we just uh, be strong, and sign the peace process, I think will be better, better for everybody. OK. I just want to ask you about Iran. I mean, progress has been made in these talks about giving access to Iran's nuclear facilities. Do you believe the time is now ripe to lift sanctions against Iran? I think so, and give uh, Iran uh, a space. You know, really, uh, you see, Iran is our neighbour, and uh, we don't want any problem and they didn't you know have any problem but if the peace you know and the, they agree with the american and the american agree and lift the sanction everybody will benefit
We suffered from the sanction on, on, on Iran. And yet they're your biggest trading partner, I think. Yes, but you know, when we uh, suffered here, we tried to open other doors for trading with other countries. Sure. So, to, to praise them. But just to be clear, Iran has done enough in your mind that the sanctions should be lifted. I think so. If they if they uh, allow the people to go and look at their nuclear weapon and they are not making any nuclear because if they, they you know nuclear is really dangerous for me also, but if they are not, it should be lifted slowly and firmly. So you believe them when they say that their their nuclear ambitions are purely for civilian nuclear power? I heard it from them, I heard it always, and I think they, sometimes they're seeing the truth. They, I don't think they, they want... Uh, Ahmad Najat, I saw him, and I asked him, are you building a nuclear weapon? And he said, okay, Sheikh Mohammed, what will I do? And if I have a means, of transporting this weapon to Israel. How many Palestinians I will kill? And the European and the American will finish my state, uh, cities in Iran. So you think, I'm, he said, I'm not crazy to go for that. This, this uh, the weapon is of the past. I just want to talk a bit about Dubai and the criticisms that have been made of Dubai about your country's human rights record. I mean, we've just had a case of an American who's just been released from prison, who made a spoof video about youth culture. And he was put in prison for several months. Why? We have a law, like uh, when we cracked at the Muslim Brotherhood, because if they want to live and stay and work, they are okay. If they want to go extreme, we have a law for that. But I mean, the, the kid said, I did nothing wrong. We had no idea of what our crime was. We had no idea how long we'd be in prison for. We weren't actually told what our crime was until five months later after we were taken in. Now, for a modern country which you strive to be, is that satisfactory? No, we try to change it. You know, we are not perfect and we try to change. Any mistake, any things, we go, we go in and try to, to change it. We are not perfect but we're doing our best. Do you accept that you got it wrong in that particular case? Maybe the judge, I, I cannot talk about the judge, what he saw in that case. Okay, well what about the woman, the Norwegian woman, who, she was raped, she goes to the police and says, I was raped, and she was put in prison herself for having illicit sex outside marriage. I think she, she was a victim, and uh, unfortunate, you know, and we tried, for that not to happen again. Because she was, she was pardoned by you in the end. So maybe the laws need changing in this country. I mean, Human Rights Watch, who we've interviewed, said, Dubai has the most modern skyline of anywhere in the world, but its legal system is from the dark ages. Not really, we, we, the legal system is, are, we're changing it, everything to suit Dubai and to suit the United Arab Emirates. So therefore, there is a change in coming. Maybe if there is a uh, law which is uh, old or, you know, we can't do, go and change it. So you've got to carry on changing your laws if you're going to carry on attracting the best people to come and work and live here? Yes, yes. And the other criticism that is made while I'm dealing with criticisms of your country is that migrant labour that often come here are very badly treated. No, I disagree with you now because the labour, you know, before, sometime the company give them less salary and now we ask for all the salaries to go through the bank so the government can see and uh, watch all these companies and give uh, the right for the labourers uh, the right uh, salary. The European Parliament Subcommittee on Human Rights said minimum labour standards are not respected, there are systematic complaints about poor accommodation and sanitation salaries and medical services are withheld and so it goes on. And you will see also very beautiful accommodation for labourers. We have now and we built and we told the companies to build 
high standard accommodation for laborers. Your Highness, I want to talk about one other subject, which is, I know, a subject of great passion to you, which is your love of horses. How shocked were you when you heard the news that some of your race horses being kept at the Godolphin stables in England had been doped? I was shocked, really, and uh, I have many trainers, and if one of them do the wrong things, you know, uh, they gave him eight years and he can, and I gave him lifetime, finish. Are you but in touch with him at all now? He comes and see some other friends, but it is not, he will never come near, near horses. And uh, we put now investigator, Lord Stephen, to really go through everything and meet everybody and I think he's getting independent and he's getting a good job. He hasn't finished yet, but I hope good luck for him. Knowing how closely you watch everything in terms of the way your economy is developing, the legal system, all the rest of it, some people will say it's extraordinary that one of your trainers would dope the horses without you knowing. Because he thought not he doped them not for racing, but you know, treatment for long term. And they will not come to see the races. Now Lord Stephen will find out the whole story and we'll all know what happened. Do you think that it damaged your reputation in the racing world? No, of course, if they think I know, but I am clear and I love, still love horses and racing. And you still love going to the race meetings I don't care. I go there, of course. And but I the truth will come out. The truth will come out because independent Lord Stephen is a policeman and he's straight and he will show and that will give it to the media. Um, so if, if I wanted to, could I use anabolic steroids in Dubai on horses? Not in Dubai and not in the whole UAE. So it is now illegal? Yes. This is from the minister meeting. We cut it. It's illegal now to have it even in the shop or anything. Okay. And I just want to ask you a final question. If you were to invite me back here in 20 years' time and, you know, we're still here. Living, or, living. Still living. <laughs> how will Dubai be different then? What is your vision for the future? We can see Dubai today. Okay, I will answer that, but before I answer that, I want to say something. Uh, you know, I'm not doing this for uh, the BBC World. Also, I'm saying to myself, I, you know, to put my view to the viewers and uh, to say Dubai is back and uh, to say the whole world, we are here and Dubai loves you back. But if you say now, 20 years from now, if we still living, I cannot see what we are driving. My vision is to Dubai to be number one and uh, happiest nation, all that way. You know, we want to be number one. Your Highness, thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. Pleasure.